Okay, so we're at the stage now where we want to stop being able to play the game or collect any apples. Um, just okay, to reload. There we go. So we want to stop playing the game once the timer reaches zero. Because right now we can keep on playing. So we can keep going forever even though we've run out of time. So one thing, I'm going to come right up to the top and I'm going to have this uh, new variable called game over. And when the game starts, the game is not over. So let's do that in many programming languages. We're going to say false. And the opposite of that would be true. So when the game starts, it's obviously, why am I writing game? When the game starts, it's not over. So game over is false. So we are playing. Now, we need to change this when the timer reaches zero. So where does the timer reach zero? So down here in our loop. So we've got if the countdown value is more than zero, then we do the countdown and show that. If it's not more than zero, then we're going to say the game is over. So I could write this out if countdown dot value equals to zero and then open the, the curly brackets and I could say game over is equal to true. So this would be one way of doing it and notice the double equals again if you're new to coding you may find that strange you might think it should be like this but we use double equals when we are checking. So we want to know if this is equal to zero. We use a single equals when we are setting something like, so I could, I could do countdown dot value equals to 10. That means that this value is going to become 10. I'm making it 10. So single equals means you're making it or setting it to something. Here, we're not making it zero. I'm checking if it is zero. So in many programming languages, we use double equals when we are checking. And the clue that we're checking is that we've said if. So if this is equal to zero, then game over is true. Now, so now we know that the game over is true and we only want to make new apples when the game is not over. So if I come back up to my collide code, so when I've collected an apple, here I'm always making a new one. But if the game is over, we do not want to make a new one. So up here, I can do another if. So I can say if game over is equal to false, so the game is not over, then I'm using these brackets and putting one there and I'm indenting. So this is a whole block. So I've got the brackets there, the curly brackets. So if game over is equal to false, then we're going to make a new apple. Okay, remember game over is equal to false at the beginning. So at the beginning, we can make new apples. But once our countdown reaches zero, we say the game over is true. So it's not false, so we can't make new apples. Okay, let's uh, run this code. And oh, I've forgotten to click in the window. Collecting apples. Okay, it's all good. New apples are being made. And now no more apples are coming because our time is zero. 
So our countdown value was zero. We said that game over is true. And that means we cannot make new apples because game over is not false. So I know that can get confusing when we've got things like is true, is not false, is not true. But the way you just need to think about it is when the game starts, it's not over. So it's false. And then as long as it's false, as long as the game is not over, we are going to make apples. And once we run out of time, yes, the game is over. Okay. And so now, let me just uh, refresh again. Now, we've actually got a game that we can play because I'm racing to get the highest score before time runs out. And then if I reload and see how many I can get this time. Of course, these apple positions are random. So like that, if it comes near you, you can get a higher score. So there's a bit of luck involved as well. So now we actually have a real game where when the time is up, we can't collect any more. So we can see we can see which player who's got the highest score. Um, there's a few things that we could change in the code just to make it look a little bit neater. So this works. So if you're happy with that, great. Um, I'm just going to show you some other ways that we can change this to look a little bit more maybe professional. But I always think, well, if it works, it works. So that's that's not too bad as long as it's not crashing. But what you might normally see here, instead of this second if, because we're checking if it's more than zero, we can do something here called else. So it's like either or. If it's more than zero, do this. Else, like otherwise, do this. And I can copy this line and put that into there. So if it's more than zero, we do the countdown. If it's not more than zero, else, otherwise, we're going to say that the game is over. And now I don't need that extra if statement. Just a little quicker, a little neater. Um, so I'm going to reload and just show you that that still works the same. So as long as the time is more than zero, we get apples. But once we've reached zero, no more apples appear. So that's um, one shortcut you can take. And another little shortcut so that you often see up here, instead of writing this out full like that, I'm actually going to just going to make a copy so you can see that. Not that we're going to want both things at the same time. Another way of writing this is with this, the exclamation mark about that. And the exclamation mark means not. So this in a lot of programming languages means not. So if not game over. So if it's not game over is the same as if game over is false. So if that's confusing, don't worry about it for now. You can just write out the whole thing like this. But these are basically the same thing. And in fact, if I get rid of that, that is the same thing as this. If game over is a shortcut way of saying if game over is true. And if not game over, that means not, is a shortcut way of saying this. But if that's confusing, don't worry. I'm just going to prove that it works. So instead of deleting, I'm going to press control and the slash key. And you see it turns all of this into a comment. So that's control and the slash key, the key that gives you that. 
So highlight everything, control and the, the forward slash. So now the code will run. And if I do that, this becomes a comment, which means this code will not run. This is ignored by the computer. So that's a quick way of removing code if you just want to test without it. If I control S and let's check if this new new code that I wrote is still working. So we get down to zero and no more apples are being made. So these two ways of doing the same thing, but you don't want them both in your game. It's one or the other. Okay, so I could delete it, but I'm just going to comment it out. Um, and then it's up to you which one you use. If this is getting confusing. You're forgetting what that means. You can write it out in full um, until you get a bit more familiar. Okay, so we do have a fully working game, but to restart, I'm having to press Control S every time to reload. And it would be nice if I didn't have to do that. So the final part will be having a system where I can quickly reload the game within the game.